right, are we live? Hi, everyone. Can you hear us? <laughs> this is our first time set up in a new studio, so we just want to make sure everything's working all right. All right, I think we're live. Um, can you see us in the stream? Oh. I don't see us on YouTube yet. OK, Ranjesh has confirmed we're live. All right, sounds good. If you refresh that, are we there? OK, they can hear us. OK, perfect. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Jesse Bishop. I'm a program manager on the WinUI team. And have... I'm Savoy Schuler. I work with Jesse on the WinUI team. Yeah, so uh, here we are in our new home in uh, Channel 9 Studio. We're borrowing from the .NET team. So you can see it's uh, much nicer than when we were broadcasting from conference rooms. If you it's saw a lot better than calls. the conference rooms. <laughs> we might need to decorate a little bit, too, you know, put our stamp on it eventually. But um, yeah, so we have a pretty packed agenda this week to talk about WinUI 2 and 3. So we appreciate everybody joining us. And if you can't join us live, uh, anyone watching the call? Oh, I'm very quiet. All right. I'm going to move the mic even closer in front of my face. Yeah, you have to be real right close to these. All right. How about now? Better? Let's hope. All right. Cool. So uh, let's switch over to HTML. Oh, there we go. Can we see the content? Perfect. All right. So uh, just to recap about the community call, this is our monthly WinUI community call every third Wednesday of the month at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, because we're here in Seattle. We'll uh, be broadcasting for an hour. So the next one is on Wednesday, February 19th. And you can follow either our GitHub repo or Twitter for the next uh, update. So here's our agenda for this week. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about WinUI 2, including an update on WinUI 2.3 and 2.4. We also have some presenters doing demos. Oh, we have a person coming in to check on us. OK, I think we're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have a few people who will be joining us on Teams to talk about some updates about WinUI 2 and some new things we have there. And then we'll be talking about WinUI 3 and all the latest developments there. And we have, again, somebody calling in who will be able to give us a demo and an update on Chromium WebView, which will be awesome. Then we have a few pages of questions from uh, all of your comments on GitHub and Twitter. So we'll get to those. And then we'll open it up for some more Q&A from the chat if we have time. So uh, to start, just to recap, what is WinUI 2? So you know we like to keep going through this because uh, not everybody joining us knows exactly what it is. And you know sometimes people are surprised at all the cool stuff we're doing. So just to recap, WinUI 2 is an open source library available now through NuGet and GitHub that provides new official XAML controls and fluent styles for EWP apps. And we do this for a few reasons. Uh, it lets us ship a little bit more often, so we can do monthly previews and stable updates uh, three times a year rather than having to wait and ship with the operating system. We also um, get backward compatibility with all of our uh, updates. So when we create a new feature, we try to make it work backwards to you know, all of the versions that your developers are actually, and not just your developers are on, but also your users are on, because not everybody updates at the same pace. Um, so this helps you keep your apps up to date, but still ship them down level to where your users actually are on different versions of Windows 10. All right, so WinUI 2. We just released WinUI 2.3 stable um, last month uh, since our last call. So I just wanted to call attention to actually our release notes pages. If people haven't seen these, they're a great way to find out some of the new features. So if you check out the docs, and these are linked from our GitHub repo as well, you can see you know, we have kind of some updates on in 2.3, we did some progress bar visual updates, which was awesome. We now have like a determinate progress bar state, so you can kind of you know, see this changing with the value. We have this cool number box control, which Savoy was the program manager for. And we'll talk a little bit about that more later, I think. But this is an awesome control that lets you actually do math in line. Uh, we heard from Fons, one of our MVPs from the Netherlands last community call about um, you know why he proposed this. I thought it was really interesting that like, you know, all the other Primitive data types have their own control. Why not numbers? Well, now we have one, so that's awesome. Um, as well as you know, tons of just fixes and minor improvements. So um, we definitely encourage everybody to go update to 2.3. Uh, we also have 2.4 in the works, so we have a preview that we just shipped last week um, for that, and you can see all of the you know milestone updates again on GitHub for that. Hey Jesse, we're uh, we're having the Teams notifications come through your. Desktop there, uh, would you mind? I'm not on Teams. Oh, must be mine. <laughs> Sorry, uh, as we work out some technical issues, by next month we should have this all polished. We literally just set this up, so um, you know, please bear with us. So you can see uh, in our repo here, 
WinUI 2.4, we have our milestone with a few different features in it. Um, so it's a great, great way to just go see in our milestones on a repo what's coming up. But in the meantime, let's talk about some of the actual great stuff we did. So um, the first thing we have up is, Anna, if you're on the call, we're, we wanted to hear some updates on the uh, samples and docs that you've improved for our collection controls. We switched to Teams. There, uh, Anna, feel free to take it away. Oh, how are we doing? Let me check the audio here. Um, Let's switch back to this for a second. Okay, I see Anna on the call. Anna, you're welcome to unmute. Uh, we might We're consider checking. jumping to our next presenter. All right, we'll go to the next one. We might have some te minor technical difficulties. Hey, Yulia, are you there? I know for sure Yulia's here. No. Oh. Hello? All right, we're still maybe getting this sorted out. Hmm. All right, on to the next one. <laughs> no problem. Uh, the other thing we can talk about is we just added uh, radial gradient brush. So this, uh, you know, might seem like a pretty, you know, basic thing, but um, I, the reason I wanted to talk about that is I actually added it, and I am definitely not a full-time developer. So this actually started. Hi, Savoy oh. and Jesse. Are you ready for me? Are you back? Okay. Okay. Actually, yes, we can switch to you now. I can't <laughs> we'll get back to radial gradient. hear you. <laughs> oh, interesting. Um, Jesse, it's because it's because you're muted on Teams. I'm not in. Teams. I'm not in Teams. I, uh, I just I, uh, opened my Teams opened chat my here. Teams chat okay, here. Okay. we might get a little bit of looping, but... People on YouTube, People let me know, if you're, let me know if you're getting audio. double audio. Okay, I'm going to go ahead yeah. and uh, uh, can, can you share hear? my screen. Okay. Okay. Can you tell okay. Anna to just present? Yeah. All right. All right. Sorry for the trouble Sorry here, folks. Trouble here. I think we're good now. Okay, okay. I'm going to share my screen and start presenting okay um can everybody hear me yes okay looks like i'm on here um so i have been working on overhauling the collections documentation and the samples that we have uh, so as you can see here, this is the overview page for collections controls, and this page has been completely overhauled along with the list view and grid view page. And uh, one of the first big changes that you'll see is our table of contents here has changed a lot. So those are some exciting new things for the docs. Uh, we also have done a few minor fixes just to a bunch of issues that have came up on GitHub about, oh, this page doesn't have enough context, or oh, we should get better uh, samples on this page. So we've taken a lot of that feedback and, make it, and made some minor improvements on a bunch of docs. We're not getting audio which from Which serves as a good reminder, you know, we're, if you see a page and it's just not helpful. First of all, you can use this voting system that's on every page. And you can also always open up a GitHub issue by going to the bottom and clicking send feedback. Uh, we appreciate all the feedback and we try and get um, to as much of it as we can. 
Um, but in addition to these new collection docs, we also have new samples in the XAML controls gallery, which I have open on my screen right now. Um, so this is the list view page, which has some very exciting new samples. So list view and group view pages have been overhauled in the controls gallery with all new samples for you guys to play with and experiment with. Um, we have some basic stuff, and then we have more samples that build on the basic stuff. Like here we have drag and drop, um, which just shows you how to drag and drop, and then you can scroll with it. I mean, you know, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm not used to using the trackpad, but we also have filtering. Uh, so this goes more in depth than the docs online. This sample shows you how to use multiple filters on one list view, and it provides all of the sample code here that sort of gives you the gist of how to filter. And then if you wanna know every single last detail, of course, the controls gallery is open source. So you can go to our GitHub repo and find all the code that we use to make this sample. But just to show you guys, if you wanted to find everybody that works in printing, you can do that. Everybody that's first name starts with a D, do that. You guys see how it works. Um, so those are the main improvements um, that I have to show everybody. But of course, we love feedback on all this stuff on the controls gallery, on the docs. Um, anybody can just hit me up on Twitter if you have small comments. And also, if you have larger comments, we love to see the GitHub issues being opened on the docs repo, um, as well as the control seller repo. So now, I can hand it back to whoever is presenting next. Great, thanks, Anna. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'm seeing in the comments that uh, some there. people missed that would be me. audio. Oh, we'll go uh, right to you. So Julia, Julia is gonna I'm, talk about progress right next. My name is Julia Fine, I am going to show you a very brief demo of the um, progress ring control. So we have been working on what a, comment, a determinate progress, progress ring, which so far has been missing from, uh, from our Which I can't find, so that's all right. I was going to switch over to my app. Um, so here it is in all its glory. We have a ring. You can change its value. So it can either go up and down, et cetera, et cetera. I happen to hook it up to, to our <clears throat> number box control um, <clears throat> just for for demonstration purposes. Um, obviously, the value would be controlled some other way. Um, so one thing to note is this is very much in preview, and we don't think that the design in particular is final because, for example, when it is set to zero, as you can see, there's to, to the user, that does not appear to be a zero doubt progress. Um, therefore, we still have some design work that needs to happen, basically, um, at very low percentages and at very high percentages. Um, again, this looks like it's a complete progress. The pro it appears that progress has completed, even though um, I set it to 98%. So there are a couple of issues still to be determined, um, but using it is as straightforward as you would expect. You simply declare a progress ring, um, and in this case, it is down to a value. Uh, what is currently missing and is going to come next is a is indeterminate property, so that you can have your indeterminate progress ring as well. But that is future work. All right. That's about all I have to show. So switching back to Jesse, who's taking over now? Is our audio back? Presenter. I think we're back. All right. Okay, and we're back. Thanks, Celia. Um, that's awesome stuff. So uh, the next thing I, I we'll get back to now is radial gradient brush. So as I was saying, hello, folks. Know, this is Adam Barlow. Oh no, no, no. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the <laughs> WebView control, and too so early. I'm a PM on the WinUI team, uh, doing the WebView. And so here, All right, I guess we're getting um, WebView right now. No problem. Here's a uh, first. I'll do a demo of the WebView. We've been making a lot of great progress. The WebView is now. This is showing a 
Edge, a Chromium-based um, Edge web view running in a UWP in a WinUI in a WinUI 3.0 app. Um, so I can go ahead and I can, you know, load URIs. I'll go to YouTube and we'll search for um, one of our favorite features, the Windows Developer Terminal, and uh, run this awesome video. And you can see the video playing. And so this is we're <clears throat> hoping that we can release uh, our plan is to release a, a version of uh, the one UI 3 alpha with WebView 2 in February uh, there will be some caveats uh, but we'll have those in the release notes and so that'll be a version of the one UI 3 alpha with WebView with the chromium based WebView 2 and additionally um, Today, I'll be, later today, I'll be releasing uh, the draft of the API spec for, you, for feedback, um, and I'll be posting a link to that on the GitHub proposal for the WebView 2. And um, so that's the update on, on the WebView. So I'll pass it back to Jesse. Cool. Thanks, Adam. Um, and again, sorry, folks, we're a little bit disorganized here because we're learning all the new technology of this switchboard, but we'll get it sorted out for next time for sure. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, thanks again, Adam. That looks pretty awesome. I know a lot of people are really excited about the new Chromium WebView um, experience. It's going to be going to be great. So, I'm um, switching back here. I uh, wanted to talk about Radial Gradient Brush is kind of our, our last new demo of new stuff. So this is something that I just added, um, and I am not a full time developer. And so the reason I wanted to call this out is, um, you know, it was actually really easy for me to go add a new feature to this, even though I'm not a full time developer working on the team or anything like that. So I just I was wondering how good is our developer guidance for WinUI 2 um, for people to go add their own features or propose them or, or even uh, you know send us a pull request to contribute for one of the issues we have open for, for things that we're looking for help with. Can you hand me the keyboard real quick, Jesse? Yeah, sure. There we go. So um, yeah, the reason I pulled this up is um, this is just sort of showing the you know Visual Studio implementation of Radial Gradient Brush that we just checked in. Um, so you can see this in the preview builds if you pull them directly off the repo. And there's actually a script in the tools folder of WinUI 2 that did most of the work here for me. It scaffolded out all of these different classes that I needed, a test project. Um, it set it all up for me. And all I needed to do was write a little bit of code. And with modern C++ WinRT, it was actually really easy, even though, again, I'm not a full-time developer. So you can see it also creates this um, you know, there's this inner loop project in our repo where if you add new features, you can have it just show up here for testing and it scaffolds into the main test page and everything like that. So you can see, you know, here's some radial gradients in my very ugly test app. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. I did this very quickly. This didn't take long at all. Um, and I was able to add a new feature. So uh, I just wanted to point this out because I, I think it's it's really neat that we have, um, you know, tools and scripts that let people just go add new features to WinUI really easily. And so I know we've got a number of, um, you know, pull requests from the community. Actually, I, I think one person's now in our top 10 contributors for the repo overall, even among our own developers. So that's awesome. We really appreciate that everyone's passionate about this and being able to contribute to the project itself is is really great. Cool. I believe I have fixed our technical difficulties by muting notifications and muting the uh, the double stream from Teams. So perfect. Hopefully don't mind me if I jump now. in real quick and do a quick test here. Yeah, please do. I'll uh, join the call and broadcast so that our team can hear us over Teams as well. Uh, if anyone on YouTube starts getting double audio, please let me know. Um, team on the call, feel free to message me and let me know if uh, you're experiencing any more technical difficulties. Awesome. Cool. cool. Thanks, Zoe. All right. So moving on to WinUI 3, and I'll just do a quick recap of this, too, since, uh, again, we, we constantly have people on the repo and other places actually surprised by what WinUI 3 is. And so this is more than just the next version of WinUI 2. It's not just a controls library for existing UWP apps. We're being much more ambitious than that. So WinUI is uh, really our native UI platform for Windows 10. And with WinUI 3, we're actually taking that to be the next version of the whole UI platform. So we're taking the full XAML and composition and input UI stack for Windows 10, and we're decoupling it from the operating system and shipping it separately. So that means you're not actually going to um, be having to use the XAML platform that ships with Windows. We're actually going to have it entirely pulled out of the box and updatable separately. So this actually replaces, it's the next version of the in-the-box XAML composition and input framework uh, and WinUI 2. So it's going to be a superset of all of those things. 
And so um, we're also going to be taking all of modern XAML. So this is the full XAML platform, not just some controls, the whole platform and open sourcing that in our existing WinUI2 repo as well. So we're pretty excited about this. It'll be allowing us to update faster and provide better backward compatibility and some more flexibility. And we'll also be able to take open source issue tracking and contributions uh, from people for the whole platform, not just a small subset of controls. The um, other cool things about that, which you can read about in the roadmap that's in our repo, there's a short link to it here. Uh, one of the main things is that we're trying to remove the barriers between UWP and Win32. So WinUI2 is UWP only right now, and we know that's not ideal for everybody. So we're really trying to break down those barriers and give you access to both the sort of WinRT UWP as well as Win32 APIs. And you'll be able to write an app that can actually run you know, inside or outside the app container sandbox. So it won't be just for UWP store apps. Um, it'll also be if you want to create you know, Win32 apps, you will be able to use either .NET 5 uh, and or C++. We're specifically recommending C++ WinRT as sort of a new modern C++ 17 compliant, um, you know, way to write C++ apps. And we know there's a lot of native developers out there. That's also what a lot of our first party um, apps are being written in. So you can see some of the first party apps like Calculator um, for Windows. The Windows Calculator is now open source on GitHub. Um, the new terminal. Uh, again, it's also using WinUI and, and written this way. Um, and we'll also be able to, yeah, like have .NET Core apps um, with .NET 5 this year. So what else? Uh, you'll be able to package with M6, which is sort of our new preferred packaging and deployment mechanism. Uh, or not, we're, we're hoping to be able to also support fully unpackaged apps. So this will be great for, um, you know, maybe those Win32 apps that you just want to X copy around and, and run and stuff like that. And finally, for interop with your existing apps like WPF or WinForms or MFC or any of those other existing platforms that you might have, you know, a lot of apps written in, we also have this technology called XAML Islands, which will let you basically write um, or write components in WinUI 3 that you'll be able to then go plug into, you know, whatever technology you may have today. So this would be really great if you have existing apps that you want to just incrementally update and start to adopt modern XAML, but you don't want to rewrite them fully yet. Um, and again, one of the main benefits of WinUI is that you get down-level support for new features. Just like with WinUI 2, anything we add, we'll, we'll try to make work you know, back further so that your users running on previous versions of Windows 10 will still be able to run the app. Uh, and we actually have an alpha available of this now if you want to go try it. It is UWP only. It doesn't have the Win32 support just yet, but um, it's, it's you know, pretty complete. Um, it looks not too bad. So our roadmap for that, uh, which Adam was talking about one of the first things we'll be doing is adding uh, the, the Chromium WebView to the existing alpha bits. So there won't be a ton of new stuff there aside from alpha, uh, from the existing alpha. It'll just be like the new Chromium WebView. So that should be out, we hope, pretty soon. That's one of our next major release things. Um, after that, we are trying to do a preview as well as open source XAML. So our goal is to do that as sort of our next major milestone a little bit later this year. Um, and then our goal is still to ship the 3.0 RTM this year. So um, I'll, and I'll actually, I'll pull this up too. Uh, not everybody seems to have known this, but with the WinUI 3 Alpha, we actually have a version of that XAML Controls Gallery app that Anna showed um, earlier. So the, the main you know, master branch of the XAML Controls Gallery runs on system XAML, we call it, with uh, WinUI 2. But we actually have a WinUI 3 branch. So I think I have it pulled up here. So, oh, I might have a little bit of, not sure what the blue bar is. <laughs> Sorry if we have some resolution aspect, you know, issues here. Um, but I think that's one of the things we've since fixed. So you can actually see this is the WinUI 3 alpha version. So you can pull this from a branch in the repo and actually run it yourself. And you can see most of these scenarios actually work just like they would today. There's a couple that are grayed out, like you can see WebView. We don't have that yet. So that's the thing Adam showed that's coming soon. But um, other than that, you can actually go and you know, look at these existing samples and uh, and actually just run them. This is all decoupled from the operating system, you know, running uh, all WinUI 3. So no systems AML at all, no WinUI 2. This is all WinUI 3. So yeah, if you try that alpha, you can, you can go do this kind of thing today. And we'd love any feedback on this. If you try it, there's a short survey you can fill out and it'll basically just, you know, tell us a little bit about what you want to do and whether or not um, you'd be willing to talk to us about what you're doing just because we're looking for as much feedback as we can get on the alpha. All right, um, 
Further on the topic of WinUI 3, we wanted to address a couple of scheduling questions from the GitHub repo. So people were asking, how much progress have we made since the last call, which was a while back now in November. So I was taking a look at our, our task tracking, um, which isn't in the open yet, sorry. <laughs> but uh, we have hundreds of tasks closed, actually. So the, our dev team and our, our program managers and everybody has been um, really busy trying to make progress here. So we've actually closed hundreds of tasks since our last call. We do have quite a lot to go, but uh, we're making good progress. So like I was saying earlier, our next major milestone that everyone will see will be the Chromium WebView release. And after that, we'll have the 3.0 preview. Um, we'll open source XAML. And we're also doing tools work on the compiler and Visual Studio and so on to make sure that we have sort of a good tooling and usage experience for everybody. Um, so that's our kind of main roadmap for, for 2020. One thing I'll note here is that the open sourcing is taking a little bit longer than we maybe thought it would <laughs> or hoped it would. Turns out it's really complicated to take part of Windows out of Windows. Um, but uh, we have a good handle on what the work actually is, and we're making good progress. So, um, you know, uh, I think by probably build um, at the latest, we should have another update for people on, on where we are with the preview and open source. And our goal is still to release the RTM by the end of this year, probably late this year. Um, how dependent is our work on .NET 5? Yeah, so we're actually not directly dependent on .NET 5. So WinUI is actually fully native written in C++. So if you are yourself writing a native app, it won't pull in a CLR dependency or anything like that. You can use it as just a purely native library. Um, but if you do want to write your app using .NET 5, that's possible. And we know that you know that's maybe even the majority of folks because .NET's awesome. So um, you know that will work as well. But we don't actually build WinUI on top of .NET 5. We just allow .NET 5 to target WinUI apps. So we're not directly dependent on their schedule for creating WinUI, uh, but we are trying to align so that you'll be able to build apps using .NET 5 with WinUI. Does that make sense? All right, we already had our WebView update. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> so moving on to the next set of questions from the GitHub repo. So we do appreciate when people give us questions uh, ahead of time because you know, it's not that we carefully try to craft answers or anything like that, as you may be able to tell. Um, if our tech supports any indication, we're making it up as we go along. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, a little bit. But uh, we'll, again, we'll, we'll, we should be more buttoned up by next, next month. Um, so uh, yeah, it just lets us kind of, you know, paste them in and make sure that we're, we're actually answering the questions that you have rather than trying to just, you know, watch the scrolling chat or anything like that. So we definitely appreciate if you're able to. We usually have a GitHub issue a few days or a week ahead. Um, and we kind of pin it to the top of our repo, and that just helps us make sure that we don't miss your questions. Um, and if we do, that mean, also means if we don't get to them during the call, we can definitely go back and, and see them and see if there's any we didn't answer and try to answer them there as well. Cool. So our first question is, what is the roadmap for the open issues on the number box control? Um, so uh, yeah, can I can. Uh, oh, we should bring it back to the. Uh, oh yeah, sure. Studio there. Hi everyone. Um, so I, uh, I worked on Numberbox, so I'll go ahead and answer this. Um, we are throwing a lot of our resources into uh, lifting for WinUI 3.0, as Jesse mentioned. Um, and so we are absolutely not abandoning progress on uh, filling out our platform with better features and new controls. Um, but we have to be smart about how we decide what work to invest in it uh, right now, um, which means that things like Swap Chain Panel have definitely out prioritized number box at the moment. Um, uh, I'm still working on it, so I'll be responding to issues, collecting feedback, and building out a plan of attack once we're available to start continuing uh, to invest in that feature. Uh, but what you guys can do from your end to help us out is be really crisp when you leave comments about uh, the apps you work on um, or how much number box means to you in terms of what it lets you uh, enable in your platform and, or sorry, in your app and your experience, um, because that helps us prioritize our work. Uh, so that we make sure we're delivering features that are meaningful for the most number of our customers possible um, and just doing the work that matters the most for you guys. Um, so uh, to respond specifically to Numberbox, I've seen a lot of uh, posts in this last week actually about uh, defaults or the types we're using um, for the values. Um, let's continue to have that conversation in the chat. Numberbox was complex. Uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, particularly compatibility reasons with WinRT, and there were a lot of um, considerations that went into choosing what type we used uh, for that. Um, conversations that go as far back as November, so I'm not entirely equipped to answer them right now. Um, 
Uh, but the thing I want to make sure that I address is that as we have these conversations, it can be really easy to focus in on what's relevant for uh, UWP. And one of the major efforts of WinUI 3 is to start serving Win32 as well. Um, so bear that in mind as we look at this. Uh, in no way are we disregarding a lot of this interest. We just have to make sure we're crafting careful compromises that best enable uh, WinUI to serve as many app models as possible. Yeah. Yeah, makes makes sense. Um, yeah, I think that's yeah, like you say, definitely true in general. A lot of our effort right now is really going to sort of the the basic infrastructure to get WinUI three lifted out of the OS and off the ground. And after that, we'll have a lot more time to you know do feature work again and things like that. There's a few other new things going into WinUI three, um, but it's not a huge list because we are you know again really focused on the open sourcing and and lifting out of the OS. Uh, although we are also in parallel working on WinUI 2, um, and so any any new features and work we do there will we'll go in. Um, if we switch back here, I think what we're going to do for next call too is we'll have a split of the video stream as well as the slides. Um, we yeah. just don't have a configuration for that yet, but we'll create one. <laughs> so uh, the next question was, what's going to be our policy on breaking changes now that WinUI 3 is going to be open source? So if we went to say WinUI 4, could we do breaking changes? And the answer is yes, we think so. We definitely want to be very thoughtful about that because um, one of the sort of core principles of, of a, a UI platform that we try to adhere to is that we don't, you know, um, break people, you know, often or unnecessarily. So we, we definitely try to shoot for that, you know, 10 plus years of, of compatibility. But um, we also realize that, you know, sometimes breaking changes are actually a good thing either because you know something just isn't working right or, or could be significantly approved, improved. So I would say that we're going to try to keep things as stable as possible, but where it absolutely makes sense to have breaking changes, we could definitely increment to you know, WinUI 4, say. And so our, our way of doing that is uh, actually that we uh, follow the semantic versioning, like the Semver spec, basically. And so this is sort of a more industry-wide uh, spec for how versioning should work to indicate breaking changes. And so you can actually see there's a link I, I put in here to both the Semver spec as well as the NuGet versioning. So right now we ship WinUI 2 as a NuGet package and we also follow the same sort of schema for, for uh, versioning where you know a, a major version, so the first number in, in the dots, uh, is whether or not there's any breaking changes. So two to three will be a breaking change. Uh, in the sense that you won't be able to use WinUI 2 and 3 together and it won't use System XAML anymore. So you, you'll either use System XAML with WinUI 2 today uh, and in the future you use just WinUI 3, which will be a superset of those. And so it's not breaking in the sense that there will be a ton of API changes or anything like that. It'll be a pretty small breaking change. It'll be a different namespace um, and you know it'll be a different app type is, is the main difference. So we could definitely do similar changes in the future and move to WinUI 4. Uh, although I think in the meantime we would have WinUI 3.1 or 3.0.1 and so on as we sort of more incrementally update it. Cool. So next set of questions. Uh, after WinUI 3 is released and open sourced, would any team members be up for occasionally live streaming some of their work on WinUI? So this is actually a really interesting idea um, that we are going to chat about uh, to the dev team about. So yeah, potentially we could do this if people are really interested in it. Um, it there definitely is some overhead to having that set up. Yeah, and uh, I think it's interesting to reflect more also on uh, what questions we could try to answer with the live stream. So when it comes to the, um, the feature proposals in particular, I know there can be a lot of ambiguity about what we look for. Um, and uh, what we try to produce in that work for developers to use. And I would be more than happy to do some community calls or live streams to talk about uh, the process we work with, um, how we think through things, and uh, uh, what's, what we focus on uh, in terms of trying to produce for our devs or our docs or, um, yeah, I think that could be helpful to help bring the community closer to the way the PMs work uh, as far as developers implementing the code. Um, once we're open source, you'll be able to see that in the commit history. Uh, if it's interesting to see live streams of that as well, let us know. Um, we can talk. I know we have brave devs out there who might be willing to do that. Um, yeah, I, and I think, uh, like I mentioned, that script sort of scaffolds out a new feature for you. I imagine yeah. we'll probably have something similar. And so we might 
it, at the very least, like produce a video of just like, you know, how does that work in case anybody wants to work on their own feature, we'll show like how to run that script and, you know, what that does and where to add your code and how to run the tests and so on. So I, I could definitely see us producing videos for that or, or a live stream of, of doing that. So that's something that we're going to take a note on and could definitely come back to. Yeah, and one thing that I'm interested in in particular, um, and you guys can feel free to message me here or on Twitter if you have thoughts about it later, but uh, one of my goals is to connect our community closer to the way in which we work so that we can all work better together. Um, and so, again, if live streaming helps with that or you'd rather us do some YouTube videos or talks, please let me know. I'd be eager uh, to connect our team with the community uh, through resources like that. Yeah, cool. All right, uh, the next question was, will or should there be a tool to easily convert WinUI 2 and system XAML projects to WinUI 3? So yeah, this is something we thought about. We're hoping that for the most part, this isn't going to be a really painful switch for your app code. Um, you can see even in the release notes for the WinUI 3 alpha, there's not a, not a very long set of things that are different, and, and a lot of those differences will be going away as well. It will definitely require namespace change and recompiling, though. And so we're actually looking into a tool. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to have the resources to do it by the, the launch of 3.0 or TM or not, but it's definitely something that's on our list that we're going to try to get to. So I don't want to make promises now, but we're definitely aware that you know, we want to make things as easy as possible for people to migrate from any existing you know, UWP app to a, a WinUI 3 app. So stay tuned. <laughs> um, the next question was, what's the future of windowing for WinUI, uh, especially for things like borderless or transparent windows? So like I mentioned earlier, we're trying to remove the barriers between the UWP versus Win32 apps and um, you know, have a, a more sort of holistic, unified, and easy to use model for both of those. And so windowing is definitely a big uh, area for desktop sort of Win32 apps today that UWP just doesn't have quite the same approach to because it's it's kind of more universal and works in in more you know device types and, and um, environments that that aren't as as windowing rich and so we definitely want to have Win32 style windowing capabilities for WinUI three apps and that's actually something that we're trying to get in place for the 3.0 RTM I'm not sure if we'll have too much progress in the first preview. Um, There'll definitely be some. <laughs> so I think at the very least, we're, we're talking about having like a sort of an escape hatch where you can actually get to really any Win32 API that you would be used to using today um, from a WinUI 3 app. And so even if we aren't able to fully flesh out a totally new windowing model, not that we would even necessarily want to, um, at the very least, you should be able to have access to all the UWP and Win32 APIs that exist today um, So as a starting point. And we are trying to make it um, you know, easier to do those things as well. So I could definitely see us having sort of a higher top level window concept in WinUI. I'm, we're still talking about exactly what that's going to look like. So again, stay tuned for, for more info on that. Um, but we're, we're actively working on that problem for sure. Cool. So next question was, is .NET Core and C Sharp 8 support coming soon? Um, well, this year definitely is the plan. So you'll be able to write a, a .NET Core, .NET 5 app with WinUI, UI, and theoretically use C Sharp 8. I don't see why not. Um, you can actually sort of do this today with a workaround with UWP apps. Not all of C Sharp 8, uh, I think, is fully supported, but um, some of it definitely works if you if you switch your language um, target version. So uh, yeah, that's definitely something we're working on this year and, and should be in place for the 3.0 RTM. Um, the other question was, what about the a new CS project structure as well? That's also something we're ac actually looking at. Uh, we're actively discussing that with the .NET and Visual Studio teams. So um, I, I can't say exactly what that's going to look like yet, but we definitely want to make sure that the project structures and everything are as easy as we can make them as well, or you know, at least make the most sense. All right. Um, next step was, any further steps to make it easier to develop Uno apps? Um, yeah. So. We aren't actively doing anything specific to Uno right now, but just the general WinUI 3 progress, um, we hope will sort of accrue value to that. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, I, I don't think we're doing anything specific, but um, Uno apps should be able to take advantage of the new stuff we add to WinUI 3 over time. Um, and this is something we can come back and revisit later. Cool. Uh, what's the approach we're taking for missing features from WPF? 
So we're definitely not shooting for exact compatibility with WPF, like, you know, line for line. Um, otherwise, we would just use WPF. Modern XAML has a lot of things WPF doesn't, and usually we, you know, made changes or introduced new things for a reason. So modern XAML, you know, WinUI 3 is definitely where our investment's going. There are specific new features, and I know somebody, Martin, maybe started a thread, Martin Anderson, I think, started a thread on uh, our GitHub repo for things that are in WPF, and people have sort of been commenting there about the specific features they would like, like some, you know, data binding stuff and things like that. So we definitely are paying attention to that thread. That's a great one to go find in our repo if you have specific WPF features that you're kind of missing from WinUI. Uh, or UWP today, just please let us know there, and we're definitely going to be looking at that over time. And again, with the 3.0 RTM, we can't really promise that we'll be adding a lot of new stuff um, in the first version, but you know we're going to keep working on it over time, and so we'll definitely be revisiting that list to see what's important to people. Cool. So next question was about the XAML controls gallery. And people were asking, hey, you know, could we improve this by adding an editor config file, kind of like we have for the main WinUI repo, and potentially updating it to like implement some of the VS suggested best practices and things like that? Um, yeah, I love that idea. Please do. <laughs> if anybody wants to go take on that issue, um, you know, I think that would be fine. You can send a support request, or uh, you know, I, I like that idea. I'll talk to Stephen Moyes, our our sort of main controls gallery manager. And uh, you know, if nobody else gets to it before we do, then we might implement that as well. I think that's a great idea. So thanks for the suggestion. Um, and the last thing I had on the list is we had a big long thread on WinRT in the repo um, this week. The, it's I think just another another thread I should say. It's not the first one. And so we definitely get the feedback here. Um, and and thanks for raising some of those issues. Uh, with WinUI three, we're definitely trying to address some of the things that were brought up there. Um, specifically, you know, the barriers between using UWP WinRT APIs versus Win32 APIs and, and um, you know, relaxing some of the constraints around the sandbox as well as, like, you know, which APIs you're allowed to use or not use and, you know, maybe that means you don't have, like, easy access to the most performant file APIs and things like that. And those are all things we definitely know about. Um, there are various reasons why things are <laughs> the way they are, which again, we're, we're often around being able to create universal apps. And so we think that, you know, a lot of those things are actually good things for universal apps, but we realize for desktop apps, that's not always what people want. And so I think actually, if we can, we might in a future community call, try to do a, a deeper dive on WinRT as a whole and, and talk maybe a little bit more about the architecture, if that's something that people would be interested in. And if it is, please do let us know again on the GitHub repo. And that's something we could prioritize going into. Cool. Um, so uh, I'll just leave this up with a few other things to check out. We have a couple other, you know, interesting monthly standups like the .NET Windows Desktop one, um, and uh, we also have a, a link here to an Ignite recording from um, the conference in the fall, which sort of shows uh, another view of the overall roadmap of WinUI and UWP and kind of where we're we going with Win32 and .NET and WinUI. So that's also worth a, a look. Um, and so with that, I think we can go to any other questions that have come up so far. Yeah, let me uh, throw it back to the studio view here. All right. Um, so I captured several questions uh, coming through on YouTube. Uh, Ryan, are you on the call? Um, actually, let's see if we can bring him up. I have a few questions for you. You know what? I'll actually throw one to Jesse while I make <laughs> sure Ryan has a moment. Oh, okay. Adam's here. I'll, uh, I'll ask the one about WebView. Uh, so Adam, let me just find where that went. Um, and again, thanks everyone for bearing with us as we work through our new setup. Okay. Uh, so Lance McCarthy asked, I'm curious about how WebView 2 is going to guarantee Chromium bits on the user's OS. Um, do you have a moment to talk a little bit about that for us? Yeah, I mean, if you're there, feel free to say hi. No? Okay, Adam and Ryan are both trying to talk, but are apparently not being heard. Uh, actually, I know how to fix this. It's what resolved our echo earlier. All right. On the fly. So debugging. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, I'll just talk about 
the challenge we had earlier, so that no one's left aboard while we fix it here, um, we had an extra instance of Teams running on our broadcasting device. So I need to pull that up and re-enable output audio. Okay. And, and so, uh, so let me just, uh, let me just on mute my device, device here. Okay. Ryan and Adam, uh, whoever wants to go first, you should be available to talk to the audience now. Oh. Testing. All right. All right. I see Adam is muted. Um, Ryan, are you on standby? Choice of a new setup. <laughs> Choice of a new setup. Jesse, I'll throw you a question sure. while we continue to try and fix this. Um, so I saw a good one from uh, Matt Lacey, I believe. Um, it, with regard to the conversion tool that we talked about, uh, yes. he wants to know if there is uh, or will be a spec for it. Uh, so that our community members can help contribute um, and put their ideas forward about what they would need in such a tool. Yes, uh, that's a great idea. So we have a, a sort of a basic feedback thread started on the tooling experience that um, I think Lucas Haynes, one of, our, one of our program managers, started in the GitHub repo. So if you just sort of look for that, or I could post a link to it again uh, in the, the comments for this community call later. Um, I think that's a great place to give us early feedback. And as we start to develop specs for any tools or experiences we're going to create. Yeah, we'll try to get those on GitHub. You can see like Adam just created one for, for WebView 2, um, and we'll try to do similar things for, for any new stuff we do. So uh, yeah, as soon as we're in a state where you know we have something concrete that people can give feedback on, we'll, we'll try to post it in the repo. Alrighty. What's next? Next. So uh, to uh, dive a little further on to our tech bug. It seems that either we get to hear the Teams call or the Teams call gets to speak oh. to the stream. Oh, no, were we uh, So I other? think, <laughs> no, we're good. I think okay. I can juggle both of these at the same time. Um, Adam answered his question in the chat, uh, the chat on YouTube, so we're free to move on. Uh, Ryan, I see you're on the call, so I'm going to throw it your way. Uh, let me ask a question, and then I'll unmute you to respond. Um, so here's one. Uh, that's actually been answered on YouTube. Ryan, it looks like you've been answering all of your questions on YouTube, so I take it back. Let's throw another question to Jesse. Um, let's see here. Uh, actually, Adam, here's another question about uh, WebView 2. Uh, Sergio writes, I was curious to know whether the Chromium-powered WebView 2 will also expose an event like web resource requested from the current WebView to let developers filter out individual web requests. I rely on that specific feature a lot uh, in one of my apps, and I was wondering whether that would still be around with the new control and working the same way. Uh, thank you guys for all the hard work. So I will now unmute uh, you guys on Teams. Yes, I, we're planning on uh, enabling you know, parity with, with existing WebView. Um, and so we will hope to, we're, our goal is to support the scenarios that you currently enjoy with the current WebView. And please give feedback on the API spec later today. It doesn't, won't include all of the APIs that will be included because it's an API spec for the WebView element that exists in WinUI and not the core WebView object. Um, but we're happy to take that feedback on GitHub and we can discuss it in detail there. Awesome. Thank you, Adam. Um, let's take a look at more questions that have come in. Um, so, 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 and Jesse, if you see anything you want to answer, feel free. Um, okay, so on YouTube, Deadpool writes, I would like to see .NET Core 3 plus WinUI 3. Uh, do you have any plans for that, Jesse? Yeah, so uh, .NET 5 is going to be the next sort of major version of .NET, and I think that's what we're trying to align around. And so effectively, yes, you should be able to write a .NET Core app targeting WinUI to you for the XAML UI. That's that's the plan. And so um, by the end of this year, that's, that's our goal. OK, Adam, I have another question for you. Um, Kamara is asking if, uh, will Web Authentication Broker be using WebView 2? And I will have you unmuted in three, two, one. 
Okay, so <clears throat> this is actually a great question, and um, this is something that I, I think we should follow up on offline. I, I don't believe that that is in plan because we uh, need to connect the dots on that. So that's actually a really great thing that you brought up. Thank you. <laughs> All right, sorry about the, uh, the awkwardness as we jump between audio streams. Um, here's a great question from uh, Dot Morton. Um, Morton would like to know, uh, would love to have a status update on swap chain. Did you guys get, uh, get it to work? And if so, could we please have a second alpha to get it before uh, the formal preview release? Um, Jesse, you may have already commented on this earlier. I don't recall. Uh, we weren't planning a dedicated release just for swap chains, but you know, it's something that we're making work and should be in a preview hopefully before too much longer. Um, certainly, you know, again, we should have an update by build on where that is at the latest, I would say. Okay, uh, here's a question for Ryan, since we haven't been able to get Ryan's audio on the call yet. Um, Deadpool is asking, uh, will inbox apps be updated to WinUI 3.0? And I will give you a thumbs up when we're ready to go uh, with your audio. If they're watching the stream, that if. might be delayed. Uh, Ryan, go uh, ahead Ryan, with the question. With the question on, um, will um, Witten will Fox Witten apps be updated, apps updated to UI 3.0? Uh, yeah, sure. I think that was asked by Deadpool Sway. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me here. Um, the answer on that is, yeah, some will be. Um, we're probably not going to be updating all inbox apps to WinUI 3, and that's just because um, at any sort of given point in time, the inbox apps are in various stages of development. So some of them are being actively improved um, and expanded on. We have new inbox apps that we work on from time to time that haven't even been released yet. We've got some of that in the pipe. Um, but then there's also some inbox apps that, um, you know, they're kind of written and done, they're working well, and we don't have plans to do much in the way of changes. So I would say our strategy for, like, the inbox apps is pretty much the same as what every person who's considering using WinUI 3 should be. Um, it should be, uh, you know, if, you've, if you want to sort of get the latest and greatest and you're doing active development in your app, then, then switch to WinUI 3. We'll, we'll just follow that through with... Uh, um, uh, the same philosophy with the inbox apps. I'd also like to answer one other question that I saw. I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to paraphrase it here because the, I've, I've lost my spot in the feed, but somebody was asking about whether or not the shell will use WinUI 3. The answer is, um, yeah, there will probably be parts of the shell that use it as well. Um, you know, WinUI 3 is still months away from shipping, so a lot of our engagements with like internal teams um, are sort of like in the planning stages right now. Um, and uh, so... Hopefully that answers your question. But yeah, I, I anticipate that um, when we ship, there will be there will be parts uh, that are using it or sort of in sort of in uh, active development in the shell. Okay, that's done. All Ooh. right. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Um, so we have a question from uh, Anurag. Will future versions of WinUI support Rust? We have no current immediate plans for that. Um, if that's something that you have a scenario where you think that would be really useful, please do open a GitHub issue and let us know why. We have a feature proposal template um, that you can follow and basically just say like, hey, I would use this for reasons X and Y, um, and we'll, we'll definitely talk about it. Yeah, and uh, I'll th toss this out there one more time. Um, like I mentioned about Numberbox, and uh, this was uh, Rust would be a similar conversation to what we saw about F Sharp uh, a few months ago. Um, uh, when you guys need compatibility or features and you let us know on our repo, uh, please, please, please talk about uh, the apps uh, that you work on, the companies you work for, et cetera, to help us materialize uh, real needs um, versus, you know, this would be a nice feature to have, but not necessary or critical to uh, my business or my applications users. Yeah, not necessarily because we love one company over another or anything like that. It's really just we try to understand, you know, what people are going to use things for and, yeah. and like, yeah. the motivation for doing a feature. We just want to make sure that, you know, we're spending our time wisely on things that will be useful for everybody. We don't want to make sure that any 
features we add to a yeah. core platform are sort of you know broadly useful. Exactly. Uh, when we invest our time, invest on, our something, time on something, we want to make, want sure, to make it's, sure it's. Oh, I'm coming through on Teams. Uh, that it's useful to as many people as we can possibly make our work useful to. Uh, so it's all about priority, uh, priority and organization on our end. Um, so let's take a look at. Oh yeah, someone's someone's pointing out the WinUI shirt. Yes, uh, you can head to our repo actually and get your own. Um, we have a link. Uh, we made it public to the swag we made for our team. Anyone can go ahead and grab it. Uh, it's all about community. Yeah, they're stylish. Um, let's see. Team. So the uh, questions have now probably got ahead of me. Um, I think we have time for one or maybe two more. One more. OK, uh, so I will just jump in and hope this one is a question. Uh, can you clarify the borderless top window windowing work you spoke to earlier? You mentioned it was being worked on for WinUI 3. Uh, the GitHub issue is uh, for it is in the freezer indicating otherwise. Yeah, so um, the the issue tracker is really, the if you're looking at the project board that shows the freezer and everything, that's really our WinUI 2 work. So if you see things like that that are tagged when you needs WinUI 3, we haven't sort of reflected our um, our backlog uh, status into into that because right now the repo is only really WinUI 2. So as we move WinUI 3 open source into the repo, those um, you know states will get updated. But it is windowing is something that someone is actively looking at, and uh, as soon as they're you know ready to go, we'll we'll post a, a spec probably similar to what we had for uh, WebView starting now for for any changes we might make to. Windowing, and again, this isn't going to be you know all done for WinUI three RTM. We're over time going to be continuing to work on it. So we want to make sure that the three O RTM is usable for Win thirty two apps, but it's definitely something that will evolve over time. So we're not exactly sure what the APIs will look like yet. But as soon as we have a proposal, we'll let everybody know. Um, right, and I, I know you said one more question, but AJ said here in the chat that his question got skipped from earlier. So I want to just give him a chance to. Post it real quick so we'll, that we'll try to go back and, and do anything we missed. To I think we have time for one one real quick thing. One real quick thing. Um, okay, here's a good question to end on. And uh, oh, it's AJ's question actually. Thanks for posting that, Raphael. Uh, past uh, WinUI three, is there any plans or thoughts on including more complex troll uh, more complex controls uh, in the gallery, such as docking, property grids, diagrams, and etc. Yeah. So we. Uh, are always looking for you know new features to add that are useful to people and like I said after we're done with the main WinUI 3 sort of infrastructure we'll have more time for, for features we hope. Um, another thing I'll point to is the Windows Community Toolkit so that's actually sort of a thing we use to incubate new controls and um, you know sort of try things out so I could definitely see a path where either the community or, or us goes and adds things to the toolkit as well. We put the data grid control in there recently, which is another one of those big complex controls that, that people were looking for. And over time, we can actually migrate things from the community toolkit to the platform as it makes sense. So I, I definitely see us uh, spending more time on things like that in the future. And, and again, please do let us know in the GitHub issues what's important to everybody. Absolutely. Um... All right, so we're that's... going to wrap it up there. Uh, as Ryan's mentioning in uh, the chat right now, if there are any questions we missed or didn't get to, um, please feel free to continue asking them. Post them to the GitHub issue uh, where we took our initial set of questions. Uh, we appreciate everyone bearing through us as we worked through uh, the technical difficulties with our first call here. I'm hoping by next month we'll be much more prepared uh, and we won't have all these problems. And um, for anyone who's joining us for the first time, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we'll post a GitHub issue uh, in advance of the call so that if you really want to make sure your question gets asked, uh, feel free to post it in advance. Uh, that's the best way to make sure we can get to it. All right, perfect. Thanks, everybody. And uh, see you all next month, we hope. Yep. Thanks again. See you soon.